I was born third generation Irish American, the only child of a devoutly Catholic family. Like my parents, I took a keen interest in Irish affairs, especially the IRA's campaign against the British in Northern Ireland. Although I had never been to that country, in my heart I had fought the fight and felt the IRA's efforts to unite Ireland under one flag were both just and noble. I believed in the cause. I went looking for it. And one day, I found it. This is Special Agent John Hicks, Boston ATF. The date is 6 March 1993. The time is 1830 hours. For the record, Alex, I'll need your legal name, date of birth, and social security number, please. Alexis Jane Shannon. I was born March 12, 1969. My social security number is 021-468629. Your most recent address was 43 Kenyon Street, apartment 4A, Boston, Massachusetts. Yes. All right, we'll take it from the beginning. Tell us about that first meeting with Sean McGinnis. It was at a bar, the Celtic pub in Southie. On Darby Street in South Boston? Yes. He came over and spoke to me. And what was it you talked about? You Americans, sometimes I wonder if you really understand what it is we're dying for. In Belfast, where I come from, you won't meet a finer people, God love them. They do just about anything for you, but their lives are futile. They've lived under the British so long, they've about given up hope. So who fights for these weary Alex? People such as these? Look at them. Singing their songs. Talking their mighty worthless talk. Would one of them risk his freedom, even his life, to see the 32 counties united again? Would you, Mr. McGinnis? I have, and I will again. Ireland is our island, and until the Brits are driven out of the north, there will be no rest, not for anyone. I had heard the words before, but never spoken by one who lived them, and I knew no point here, friend. this man had been there. You're with the provisionals, aren't you? Boston Irish are a pretty close-knit community, Mr. McGinnis. We all know the IRA sends its fugitives here to hide from the British. And you're new in town. Take care how well you listen, Miss Shannon. Don't worry. My grandfather fought for the IRA during the Tan War. I grew up listening to his war stories. I admired what he did. What is it you do, Alex? I'm a grad student at Boston College. Irish studies. <laughs> I guess that must seem pretty pointless to you. Studying the past instead of shaping the future. Well, that's the Irish view, isn't it? To hell with the future and live on the past. May the Lord in his mercy be kind to Belfast. I guess that's why I envied my grandfather. And why I envy you. You're doing something about Ireland's future. I only wish I had your sense of purpose, your passion for the struggle. My only struggle is getting out of bed in the morning. The fight isn't all Alex. You can still be part of it. I'm leaving for Belfast tonight. Why don't you join me? Join the movement. What? You're not serious. I couldn't do that. I have another semester to finish. I guess you know what's important. My family's here. I have obligations. Of course you do. I'll be going now. Make sure to keep your nose to the book and have yourself a good life, Alex. And make sure you set your alarm. We wouldn't want you to be late for school now, would we? Thanks, friend. Believe in what you're fighting for. I always have. 
Please understand, it's not that I wouldn't love to be a part of your cause. It's just that I can't. My cause? Well, Alex, you're Irish too. Here, 6, 2 a.m., if you're coming, dress warm, pack light. And we don't wait. That night, I couldn't stop thinking about Sean McGuinness. I'm not sure if it was who he was or what he was that seduced me. I only knew I wanted to be with him. To have what he had. What my grandfather had. I don't know. At the time, somehow, it all seemed so... romantic. I suppose I was ready to believe in most anything. Or anyone that could validate my life. Even if it wasn't the truth. Maybe I was afraid of reason, of losing my resolve. I really don't know why I couldn't tell my mother what I was about to do. Could have been I wanted this thing too much to hear otherwise. I had decided. All right, buddy, check this out, huh? You got 25 of these 12 gauge. Pistol grip, good. Next. Short stock, huh? Over here. Look at this, 35 AT-22s. Check that out, collapsible stock, huh? Look at this, look at this. You know what this is, huh? You know what this is? M16. We got 100 of these, baby. Woo! Automatic. We got 100,000 American. Yeah. Pleasure doing business with you. Fuck you, too, huh? We got company. She was out at the boat. She said she was told to meet you here. Who is this girl, Sean? The answer to our prayers, Damien. We're about ready to load up. Go on back to the boat. I'll meet you there in a few minutes. You're a bit early. I didn't want to miss the boat. What are you doing? Well, you see, Alex. The first principle of war is to kill the enemy. Sean was running guns to the he IRA, but it didn't matter. He postured for me, made speeches. And I say to my people's masters, be aware of the thing that is coming. Be aware of the risen people who shall take what ye would not give. But it wasn't necessary. I was already sold. You still with us, Alex? I'm with you. Great stuff. All right, gentlemen, it's time to go. Start loading up. Well, we're off to the boat. You know, Alex, I didn't think it'd come. Neither did I. Just that my father died regretting the things he should have done and never did. I don't want to live my life like that. I want to get involved like my grandfather was. Getting involved is easy enough. It's a staying that's hard. In the beginning, we're all out to change the world overnight. But after a while, you come to realize that it takes at least a week. After the raid, where did he take you? We went to the wharf and boarded a boat. 
And that's how you made it to Northern Ireland? That's right. Anything worth noting about the trip over? A lot of talk. Mostly about Ireland. About the struggle. That's all. Let's pick it up then when you arrived in Belfast. We were met by Seamus O'Connor, an IRA soldier with the Belfast Brigade. Seamus never spoke, but he didn't need a voice to tell me how much he despised me. He and Damien were the closest of comrades, zealots bonded by their fanaticism. What Damien hated, so did Seamus. And Damien hated me almost as much as he did the British and the Protestants. An outsider, especially a naive American girl playing at war, had no business in his world. My father drove a taxi in New York before we moved to Boston. Is this your cab? <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll have to excuse Seamus. He's not one for conversation. Some Lila's tugs working for the right hand once caught him talking to one of their young ladies. So they cut out his tongue. This is Protestant East Belfast, then? Irish, you refuse to embrace Ireland. Afraid of being absorbed by the Catholics if the British pull out. This isn't a religious war. It's about politics. I think it's about identity and the fear of having it taken away. Then they're nothing but little children afraid of the dark. They can either grow up or die, every one of them. Ah, I'm sick of a lot of them. And the you, Bordy. What's the story here, Sean? Just whose side is this young one on? Never mind that mad dub. We got trouble ahead. Checkpoint, British soldiers. ID. Where are you coming from with these people, Mr. O'Connor? Eh, uh, my friend here is a mute, sir, but I can tell you that we're coming from visiting me poor old ma. Right. We'll have your papers now. All of you. Wish we could, friend, but we can't. Pull the car over. Open up the boot, let's go. Sorry, wanker. Can't do it. Ah! Ah! What? Ah! What? Sorry about the hoods, but it's best you don't know where we are. Take a seat. You'll find some magazines here. It's just like going to the dentist, you see? You sure you're all right? You sure? I'll be back shortly. Good Jesus, Sean, what the hell happened? We're eight hundred and fifty thousand pounds and we don't have a bullet to show for it. We were depending on you for that shipment. We needed those guns. I don't know what happened. All I know is that the feds were on it. They had to be tipped off. And who do you think that might have been? Eight people were involved with the shipment. There must have been twice that who knew about it. Christ, Paddy. 
Who knows? Could have been anyone. Even the middleman. You forgot about the girl. What about her? Why don't you tell us? You all know why she was recruited. She's perfect for the mission and better than anyone local. You think so? While you were on the boat, we got intelligence from our people in London. The Brits penetrated us in Boston, Sean. The agent was a female. Aye. Damien says you met her in the pub and that you gave her the time and the place and a shipment. You see, Sean, we've all been wondering here just who recruited who. It couldn't be her. Think what you like. It's already been decided. We go ahead with the plan with a slight change in it. Teddy, bring over the package, would you? It looks like a working camera, all right. But I've gutted the insides and packed it with C4. A bomb is triggered when the camera is turned on. And should the mechanism fail for some reason? We've got a backup. I can set it off from the street by remote. You want her to blow herself up? Yeah, the kingdom come and the loyalist bastards with her. Anything to cross eight after the blast. Mind. We finish here, the rifle team's here and here. Everything's been taken care of at your end. Whatever you do, don't give the girl the mission until you're on your way to the target, understand? And there's no discussion on that. You fucked up once now, Sean. Be in your best interest not to fuck up again. You can put your gear in the bedroom, that way. I'll take the couch. What are you doing? A wanted man's force of habit. I have some coffee, but I recommend the tea. So, what do we do now? We wait, we get some sleep. Tomorrow we drive into East Belfast. You've got your first mission. What is it? That'll all be explained tomorrow. You're a part of it now, Alex. It's what you wanted. Sean. Is it all right to admit I'm scared? It's all right. It's all right to be scared, Alex. I'm 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never say you're sorry. Sorry means you're weak. We do what we have to do, and we are who we are. And relax. Lay down your head. It's been a long day all around. Don't start driving until I say. You've heard of the UFF, the Ulster Freedom Fighters? They're a Protestant paramilitary group. Well, then maybe you know that they butchered up a pub in West Belfast not long ago. The bastards will do anything, including killing innocent Catholics, to keep the six counties British. It's what we're fighting against, isn't it? You will enter UFF headquarters. Memorize as much of the layout as possible and videotape what you can. Why? You're a provisional soldier now. You don't ask why. You follow orders. The camera. There's really nothing to it. Power switch. Zoom. And this starts the camera. And they'll just let me walk right in? You're a journalist from Boston. You're doing some research on the Troubles, and you'll be interviewing some of their leadership. It's all been arranged through our American contacts. Use your driver's license for identification. Just play your part, Alex. Ask a few questions, and let them do most of the talking. And you'll be all right. Let's go. Set the camera on this tripod using this latch and knock it down tight. And make sure the bastards smile. Don't be nervous. Easy for you to say. Wish me luck. You'll be grand. Bye bye, Bordy. Fuck. I forgot to tell her not to roll the tape until the interview is to begin. Once the camera is set, don't turn on the camera. Do you understand? Find an excuse to get out of the building, then get out fast! But I thought you wanted... Follow your orders! What the fuck is the bitch waiting for? My name is Alexis Shannon. 
I'm here to do an interview. It's the anchor reporter. Stop here. Arms up. This way. This here's the Yankee been expecting. Please, come in. You can sit up there. My friends are more comfortable this way. I'm sure you can appreciate we have more than a few enemies who would kill to get a look at us. You understand the conditions? No questions about operations. We talk, you listen. Yes, I understand. We want your people to know but if anyone in any part of the world supports the IRA here in Ulster, the UFF is prepared to take action against them. And that includes organizations in your own country. But maybe I should save it for the tape, what? some trouble, are you? It's just that um, I'm not used to this tripod. What did you say the name was again? My name? Alexis Shannon. Tell me, Miss Shannon. How long have you been doing this kind of work? How long? Oh, quite a while, I'd say. What'd you know? And what else have you done in the way of journalism, I mean? Oh, different things. Like what? Nothing you would have heard of. Excuse me, but is there a bathroom here? Back through the door, to the left. to Colin. Taking the purse. She just went out the front door. Holy Christ!
you making out there, Paddy? Never mind me. How many do we lose? Don't know. Two, maybe three. Danny for sure. Jimmy Gallagher too, I think. And, and they lifted Teddy. The bullet's still in there. We'll have to get it out. Well, get on with it then, woman. <laughs> Give us a fag here, Billy. What a bloody fucking mess. Aye, that's the truth. Why did your girl come out, Sean? Why did she run? Why would I know? Because you were the only one to talk to her, that's why. How else could she have known? Yeah. What's the story, Sean? You fucked the girl, now you're fucking your brother. Fuck you, man. Come on. Take it away, Damien. Take it away. Get the fuck, go on. The British were waiting for us. It was a trap. They knew we were going to be there. Hey, did they know of it? Hey, the fuck did they know of it? I don't know, Paddy! Well, she's safe now with her SES friends, isn't she? And a special branch as well, no date. But I promise you this. If she ever gets back in the streets of Belfast again, she's ours. And we'll get the truth out of her. All of it. You can count on that. Go on and cut it out, will you? Take them to one. Excuse us a moment, Kevin. Are you aware that the automatic penalty for membership in the outlawed Irish Republican Army is seven years in prison? I'm not with the Irish Republican Army. Point of fact, young lady, you are indeed a member of the IRA. You're a hapless recruit from America brought in by the provisionals for a suicide mission you knew nothing about. Isn't that right, Miss Shannon? How do you know my name? Who are you? You've been through quite the ordeal, haven't you? But I would venture to say you hardly qualify as a dangerous criminal. Now, your only offense is the one that brought you here. A tragically misguided sense of patriotic duty. How tiring it all is, don't you think? How the Irish go on and on and on. It's like having your tooth drilled. Push. I don't... I don't feel right. I'm sorry, young lady, but it's necessary. Would you like a break here, Alex? No, I'm all right. From that point, what do you remember? Do you remember leaving the room? No. There's nothing. Well, then, what's the next thing you can recall?
was still drugged, with no idea where I was or how I'd ended up back on the street. Even if I had all my senses, I couldn't have known the danger surrounding me. I had been released on the border between East and West Belfast and was being hunted by both the Protestant and Catholic paramilitaries. There was no place of sanctuary in Belfast, except one. I don't know what led me to enter Bell's Pub, but ever the reason, it was my salvation. Make the call. Can someone help me, please? Ben. You love it home, right? Harry, give us a hand here. Why don't you pick her up and we'll take her upstairs? Right, watch the bar. And stay on this side of it. You can go back down to the bar now, Harry. I'll take care of her. You know who she could be, don't you? I know. You'd be putting yourself right in harm's way, Ben. Back to the bar with you. Go on. My name's Belle. You came into my pub, so I suppose I'm stuck with you. You know, there was some excitement just yesterday. Quite the news on the telly, really. Some local UFF lads were done in by a bomb. A bomb left by a girl with your colour of hair. Just about your age. A yank, in fact. Protestant paramilitaries are hoping to get their hands on this girl in the worst way. But it seems the British got to her first. You wouldn't happen to be that young woman by any chance now, would you? Because if you were, I'd first be obliged to tell you this. I'm a Protestant woman, raised British. I was brought up to feel the wee hairs in the back of my neck prickle at the mention of the troop and of the colours. I've long held to the belief that Northern Ireland is more in common with the South. I'm in favour of a united Ireland. But I'll be damned if I'm going to be bombed and it. That's what I would tell this girl if I ever did meet her. Well, there's trouble. We got a couple of probies downstairs looking for your friend. Try to get rid of them, Harry. And if they won't leave, stall them. Sorry, lads. Uh, just ask the owner if she's seen the girl. But she hasn't. We were tipped she came in here not ten minutes ago. Like I said, I haven't seen her. But you're certainly welcome to sit and over up a pint or two. Hold on, just where the hell do you think you're going? Where's the girl? What girl? Get out! Are you both dead? I told you to get the hell out of my house, you bloody bastard! I'm gonna phone the police. No, no, no. You're gonna tell us where the British agent is. Because you see, Mrs. McCreesh, the way I figure it is that anyone who shelters scum is scum themselves. Now, Where's the girl? Go to hell. 
Well, 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 Mrs. McCreesh, what have we here? You better pray to God I don't find out you've been lying to us, Mrs. McCreesh. <laughs> you really don't want to be getting me haggles up. You're all wrecked. Yeah, we're both fine, Harry. Go back and take care of the business, please. Off with you. You can come up now, they're gone. Probably think you're a British agent. Now, why would they think that? I don't know. You don't know? What's your name, young lady? Alex Shannon. It's time I heard the truth, Alex Shannon. I need it now because I put my own life in danger. Did you have something to do with that bomb yesterday? I didn't know it was a bomb. It was in a camera. They told me to take some videotapes, that's all, I swear. I didn't know. At least I wasn't sure. I don't know. I don't know about anything anymore. I just want to get out of here. Probably say you're a British agent. But the British agent plants a bomb. Truth is, makes no sense to me either. You know, run on a pub, you hear a lot of blarney coming across the bar. After a while, you get an ear for what's the truth and what isn't. I think you believe in what you're saying. So, I'll say no more about it. When you have the chance, get those clothes off you and I'll give them a wash. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. You'll find we're not all heartless people here, love. Is it finished? It appears they didn't find her, but she's still inside, all right. Oh, for Christ's sakes. 
tip the stupid bastards off again. Maybe they'll get it right this time. There's one more thing. The mix come to see you. He's in your office. Shit. Take over here. This is a bit foolhardy, wouldn't you say? What is it you want, Sean? I want you to find Alex Shannon and get her on that plane back to Boston. And I want her federally protected once she gets there. Plans have changed. Certain situations have occurred, haven't they? It would have been better for everyone if you'd let her blow herself up. What the hell is this? The deal was is that you'd pick up the girl and get her out of Belfast. If you're backing out on me, Major, I'm out. Do you understand? That would be a grave mistake. Don't ask me to explain yeah. why. What is that? Are you threatening me? I'm telling you to be smart, Sean. The girl was brought in to cover your ass. You knew that when you recruited her. So far, it's worked beautifully. The IRA swallowed everything we fed them. But as long as that girl's alive, the truth can be found out. Just how would it look if British intelligence knew of that bomb and still let it go off? How would that reflect on our government? Do you think the public would care if the UFF lost three of its top men? Or that we use them as bait to catch some of your mates in the IRA? Can you imagine the unrest that would follow here in Northern Ireland? Not to mention the backlash in England. Goddamn difficult enough keeping the blasted peace in this godforsaken place without that getting out! So you see, Sean, in the grand scheme of things, I'm afraid the young lady doesn't count for very much. Now, you just let the local paramilitaries take care of this, and no one will be the wiser. Once it's over, you can go back to doing what you're paid for. You're a cold bastard. Forget about the girl. She's already dead. And should you try to interfere, you'll end up the same. Oh, and Sean, that was a threat. I have a friend, he's the captain of a trawler, and he can take you to Scotland. Have a wee bit of money for the way. You can buy a ticket there and catch a plane from Glasgow back to the States. You do that for me? Well, if I won't love, who will? The name of the trawler's the Miss Kim. He takes her out first thing every morning. So we're making sure that you're on board tonight. Elsa's three days before she returns. And to tell you the truth, love, I don't think you'd survive that long in Belfast. Done. So, what do you think? Did I miss my call? I don't think so. Well, this and a change of hair colour help to get you through East Belfast without too much notice. And we've got to get you out of there. That we know. If 
the IRA doesn't get you. One of the Protestant paramilitaries certainly will. Everything's written down. There's over 500 quid here. That should be enough to see you home. Thank you. Time for my visit with Robert. Who's Robert? My husband. Come on over here. Oh, not so close to the window. Do you see that cemetery over there? I pay my husband to visit there every day. He joined the IRA and, as you say, he spent 12 years of it locked away in the cache. We met when he got out. He swore he'd never go back to being what he was. So we bought this pub. Pride and joy. God, but he loved this pub. One night he was closing up. There was a young fella at the bar. Without a word, he up and shot me, Robert, dead. To this day, I don't know why he'd done it. He had no sense. My husband was the loveliest man. I dearly miss him. Just sickens the heart out of me when I see what's been done to us by a bunch of futile men. I say the war's already been lost. They lost it politically and they've lost it militarily. And they lost it morally long ago. Okay, I'm off now. See if this fits you, it was my husband's. There's some hair colouring on the bathroom sink. I want you to use it. I have no fancy for it. Besides, I've got this gut feeling I won't be scratching too many grey hairs. Belle. Thank you for everything. Brian, how are you? Fine, Belle, thanks. Harry, I need to borrow your car for a few hours this afternoon. Is that all right? Okay with me. Say hello to Robert for me. I will.
I'm right behind you, Brody! You're all mine! Read it. Billy, be a good lad and get Sean McGuinness in here. I told you won't talk about the SAS, Miss Shannon. I don't know anything about that. Why are you doing this? You might say I'm returning the favor of something that was done to me by your mates in the special branch. It's not pleasant. Not for anyone. But it seems to get at the truth. Please, you've made a Finger mistake. Finger tips, miss. How long have you worked for the SAS? Your finger tips. How long, Miss Shannon? I told you. I don't want to be here. Please, let me go. I don't need this either, Alex. So why don't you save us all the misery and tell us how long you worked for British intelligence? I for the British. I don't know anything about that. You don't work for the British? I never have. I swear. Well, we'll just have to make sure of it. Paddy wants to see me. This way. Once again, how long have you been a member of the British intelligence? I can't feel. My fingers are numb. How long have you been an SAS agent? <laughs> I 
Enter. Hello, Sean. We were just discussing Miss Shannon's previous employer. Isn't that right, Alex? I'm so tired. I have to rest. I'm just so tired. It's all right. Get her a drink. Over there. <laughs> Keep the hood in her. It'll be all right. Get out the fuck! fuck. <gasps> do you feel bad for it, do you, Sean? And what about the treachery done to your mates, huh? It's a cruel business to Sean, isn't it? But this kind of thing must be discouraged. Get out! I'm not finished with you yet. Now, we begin again. Paddy wants to see you, Sean. We're finished here. What did she say? It's what she didn't say. Told me all I needed to know. Get her dressed. You go to the Landon's End and execute her. One bullet, back of the head. Well, Damien will take care of it. Right. And who'll take care of Damien? The man's a loose cannon, Stephen. He's off shooting women. It's bad for business, isn't it? As soon as he's done with McGuinness, we'll be done with him. Understand? I'll see that it's done, Paddy. Christ. It's too bad. Guinness, are you with us or are you not? Or maybe are we whore? Could it be that our friend Sean has a Union Jack painted on his arse? Take that gun off me, Damien! I can't do it. Not this time, Sean O'Cara. This here is Paddy's orders. Pigeons of a feather die together. Now do the girl or I'll do you both myself. Get it done with, you gutless bastard! You fucking traitor! Do it! Now!
Put it down. Was she worth it, Sean? Just do it. You know I'm dead anyway. Right you are, Sean. We're going, Alex. You're going? Where can you possibly go? There's no sanctuary for you, nor the girl. There's no place you can hide, Sean. Nowhere at all! He was right, wasn't he? No matter where I go, I can never be safe. things I do best, Alex. It's what I get paid for. Who are you? Who do you want me to be? You need a mole? I'm your man. You need a gunrunner? I can do that too. Makes no difference. I can play it both ways, so long as it pays. Alex. 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 I, I trusted you. I believed in what you said. They were lies. Everything was lies. You bastard. You mercenary bastard. I'm not proud of it. And I don't expect your forgiveness. But if you can believe in just one thing, Please believe in this. I'm sorry. Day and try to work things out with the Protestants and Paddy McClure. The only problem will be the SAS. But as long as this survives, so will you. You there? Are you Bell's friend? Yes. Well, get aboard if you're coming with us. I won't wait. Listen, give this to a guy named John Hicks, the federal agent with the ATF in Boston. He's a good fellow. He'll know what to do. Let's go, young lady. Bye, Alex. All the best, Jim. thinking how perfect it was. This man is complicated and confused as the country itself. And how a cause that at first seemed so noble and romantic was in truth 
only sad and utterly insane. It was just a mad game after all. Because no one wins. I'd like that break now. 